The people doing that investigation were people that have been caught that are known scoundrels there in, I guess you could say, they're dirty cops. That was the president today responding to the story on Friday that the FBI tried to investigate him as a foreign spy. That happened. No one can test that it did. How is the Democratic Party viewing this development? Joining us tonight is Richard Goodstein. He's a lawyer. He advised both Bill and Hillary Clinton. Richard, good to see you tonight. Thanks for having me. So here's the core of the New York Times story. The uh, officials at the FBI watched the president on the campaign trial in 2016, and they watched him say, and I'm quoting now from a press conference July 26th, I believe, 2016 in Florida, quote, there's nothing I'd rather do than have a Russia, to have Russia friendly as opposed to the way they are right, right now. Wouldn't it be nice if we actually got along with, as an example, Russia, I'm all for it. So he says that, reflecting the views, I think, of a lot of Americans, and they say he must be working for Putin. What's wrong with that, would you say? Here's where I think you and most Democrats disagree. Um, as Dick Cheney said, what the Russians did in the 2016 elections was an act of war. This was unprecedented. You talked in your opening uh, monologue today about what was unprecedented about this investigation of Donald Trump. We could spend the rest of this show, not just this segment, listing all the things that he's done, siding with Putin in Helsinki against our intelligence agencies. Okay. That's unprecedented. The okay, list so, goes let, on. Let me, let me ask you, so there's no question that he has a different view from the neocon establishment in Washington, the ones that have destroyed our country and the world and have never gone to prison, unfortunately, as a result of what they did. So he is different. There's no doubt about that. But I'm just wondering, as a kind of factual matter, is there something wrong? If I were to say on the air, you know, I kind of, I kind of like Russia, or, you know, I think they're a lot better than China. Would that make my loyalty to America suspect? Would that, that qualify me for an FBI investigation? Would it? No, but if you were a presidential oh. candidate and said to the public, to the Russians, please steal from Hillary Clinton, please steal from her, that would actually, and then you actually knew as the intelligence agencies right. that the Russians were stealing from her uh -huh. and that Trump when was did, using it hundreds when, of times. Okay. And we actually don't know what else these intercepts of. Um, we don't, oh, we don't know. We don't we know. Don't know. Oh, okay, we but we do know. Well, let me ask you this. Um, do you think that it's within bounds for the most powerful law enforcement agency in the world to see a politician they don't like, open an investigation into whether he committed treason, discover that he did not commit treason, file no charges against him, and then leak the existence of that investigation to the press. Okay. Do you think that's, that's, a, that's an okay way to conduct business within an executive branch? Are you comfortable with that? Well, the predicate is that we, he didn't commit treason, which is siding, aiding and abetting your enemy. Actually, I think on the public record, we know that he kind of has, whether that rises to the level of anybody in Congress you, you, you or the public. You don't agree. No, but hold on. I'm talking about the law enforcement. Look, you don't agree with Trump. You don't agree with this Russia policy. I think that's fine. I have no interest in seeing the FBI open an investigation into you for disagreeing with me because I'm not a fascist. But I'm just wondering if you think it's okay for a law enforcement agency to investigate a politician whose views they disagree with, find no chargeable evidence, and then leak the fact they investigated him in order to discredit him. Are you comfortable with that standard? That's all well, again, I'm asking. We don't know that they haven't found chargeable evidence. One, we, until Mueller has Why don't his they report. charge him? Well, well, let's see what Mueller has to say. No, this which, isn't Mueller. Wait, hold on. This isn't Mueller. He's running a separate investigation, which we, is we independent. Actually, no, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. It's, it's independent from Mueller. This was the FBI. Did they, if they didn't find anything, is it okay even if they did find something? Shouldn't we learn about it in the filing of charges? Like, is it okay to discredit politicians using a law enforcement agency? Is that, is that cool with you? Well, when you say filing of charges, I, I, I tend to agree, I think, with you that probably prosecuting a sitting president is not something that's considered appropriate. That's what impeachment's for. So, again, you, your predicate for your, your kind of uh, assertion about misconduct by the FBI is something I just don't, and I think most Democrats and most of the public, doesn't subscribe to, which is... So, so, so it's okay. I just want to know, like, what's the standard going forward? So President Harris, three years from now, will have views that I don't agree with. If I see the FBI investigate her for having those views, and if she for is being too close to Uzbekistan or whatever, yeah. but they don't charge her, but then they leak that they thought maybe she was a quizzling, that's totally fine. It's not a big and if deal. And Uzbekistan 
had the way to change the United States elections, and she consorted with them, and her son did, and her son-in-law did, and other, and her campaign chairman was an aide wow. to the Uzbekistan government. Yes, the, and, and actually changed the platform of the Democratic Party changed to, the cha platform. to uh, help the Uzbekistan. It's yeah, a, actually, it's then, okay. I Hold on. It's okay. Can I just ask one last question? Is it? Do you think it's moral for the for me as a parent, for example, to say, I don't think that my son should fight for the territorial integrity of Ukraine? Or am I somehow working for Putin if I think that? Uh, look, uh, Tucker, people have different views as to what's the standard by which their people, their, their uh, flesh and blood, should be committed to the defense of the United States. Okay, but Some so, people so why military, should I care? Wait, why should I care here's why we should about care whether be, Russia invades Ukraine? I mean, I'm not against Ukraine. Why. I'm just saying, like, why, I'm an American. Why do here's I care? Be Remind because me. If, you, if you look at the Russian press, I think they're coming to believe that Donald Trump is, sorry, a stooge. And therefore, they can get away with things in Ukraine. In, okay, but, but why do I right, care? Just super quick, tell me why I care if they take over Ukraine. I'm not, I'm not Be, calling for an invasion of Ukraine. Europe, but, well, oh, so they're going oh, to invade Liechtenstein next. Like, this is well, not Well, it's not Liechtenstein, you actually. I, okay. I think they're trying to, we, we know that they're meddling in Brexit right. and these ex elections in France and elsewhere. Oh, they're invading England. So, okay. Well, okay. they're doing it. Uh, okay. Richard, thank you so much. Good to My see pleasure. you. My pleasure. See you. We're still waiting breathlessly, of course, for the release of the Mueller report. For some, the final import is anticipated like the rapture, a religious event that will expose and destroy the incubus that is Donald Trump. I personally think that what uh, Mueller is heading to is not only the indictments, because remember, there may be more, right? He's not going to, you know, he's going to, th there may be more coming down the pike, right. but also uh, a report that discloses the extent to which Trump and his family are compromised by the Russians. Compromised. How do I get to be a CNN analyst? Low bar, obviously. Others, though, are more cautious. They're warning that Mueller's report could be a disappointment in the end. People who are closest uh, to, to what Mueller has been doing, who have interacted with the special counsel, caution me that this report is almost certain to be anticlimactic. Ken Starr is a former independent counsel. Of course, he's the author of the book Contempt, a memoir of the Clinton investigation, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Starr, thank you very much for coming on, Judge. Um, thank you, So Tucker. I'm not sure which I'm rooting for, the anticlimactic version <laughs> of the report or the report that actually answers the questions outstanding, but... If it turns out the report does not find the president colluded with Russia and goes in another direction, shouldn't Mueller offer some kind of apology for gumming up the wheels of government for two years and destroying <laughs> public I'm serious and destroying public now, confidence I know you are. in I know every you are, institution Tucker. this country has? I understand, Tucker. I have a different view. Uh, and that uh, view is that uh, Mueller should bring this to a close. We've needed to know the answer about collusion for a long time. And I think he knows that answer. And I wish we would know that pretty darn soon, because that goes to the heart of American politics, et cetera, as well as our relationships with Russia. But here's why I'm not subscribing to the anti Mueller view. All of the Republican leadership agrees, let him finish his work. Bill Barr, the nominee, and who's superbly qualified, is now saying, let him finish his work. And that's what I want him to do. Now, right. I will say well, Let me just say, there's addition. no group I respect Those, less. So it, that holds no water with me. I'm just wondering, as an American, <laughs> why wouldn't the interest of the country well, come before all of this stuff? Like, well, how are we benefiting from this protracted investigation? Because Bob Mueller has been finding stuff that needed to be found out. Specifically, the 13 Russian individuals and the two organizations, you've read those indictments from some few months ago, and that tells a very powerful story about Russian interference, alleged, it's an indictment, but it doesn't, and this is, goes to the fundamental point, it doesn't have one word in those 35 pages in one indictment, many pages in the second indictment, that suggests collusion. So there's interference in the, tr the Trump administration, so leave Congress aside. The Trump administration agrees that there was interference. And there are sanctions against Russia and Russian individuals because of, of interference. Now, in terms of the report, I hope that the report will, in fact, be a report that is consistent with Department of Justice practice, which is you don't bring scurrilous charges. You don't make charges against people in reports. You either charge them, that is to say you file a, an indictment, or you don't. 
And I think that's Bob Mueller's ultimate uh, responsibility. Right. And that's the regulation. Listen, one of the very many problems, as you know, with the independent counsel law under which I served is it called for this vast report to do what? To go to the House of Representatives for purposes of impeachment. Let's get the Justice Department out of that business entirely. Yeah, I would House say the, the DOJ, the, yeah, just leaking against people they don't like. A little, little scary, oh, I would that say. That is terrible. In fact, let me comment on that, if I may, very, very, very quickly, if you would, yes. What, when I read the New York Times article, my first reaction was, we need an investigation right now as to who leaked this. We think yeah. we know. What was their motivation and why the timing? This was many months ago. and There's been right. no suggestion whatsoever of, to support this outrageous charge against the president. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Ken Starr, thank you very much. My pleasure, Tucker.